At this point in time, we know that the maiden voyage of one of the world's most famous ships went catastrophically wrong and that the loss of life in the sinking was substantial. But there are things that not many know about the RMS Titanic. Things that are not only interesting, but will change the way you think about it forever. Here, we've compiled some of the more thought-provoking facts about the ship that has affected so many throughout the last 107 years. This is Little Known History of the Titanic. 13. The Titanic was heard. A Welsh operator of a wireless radio named Artie Moore picked up the distress signals from the doomed ship on his radio even though he was located some 3,000 miles away. His equipment was homemade, which makes the story that much more incredible. Sadly, he passed the message on to the local constabulary and others. Yet, nobody took him seriously, nor even believed him. Then, two days later, news of the sinking of the great ship came and confirmed what he had already known and tried to tell. His tale was publicized, and he gained near-worldwide attention, including that of what was then called the Monmouthshire Education Committee. They gave him a scholarship to the British School of Telegraphy, and not long after, Guillermo Marconi, the inventor of the radio, learned of his story via a letter. Marconi offered Moore a position in the Marconi Company. 12. A film about the sinking just 29 days later. Can you imagine putting together a film about a disaster less than a month after it happened? That's exactly how it went with the Titanic, when the film Saved from the Titanic screened just 29 days after the sinking. Want to hear another amazing part of this film? Its leading lady was a woman by the name of Dorothy Gibson, who was an actual survivor from the ship. Those working on the project wanted it to be as authentic as possible, so they had her wear the clothes she had been wearing when the ship hit the iceberg and went down. It's been reported that Gibson went through a mental breakdown as the film was being worked on, but who can blame her? What a quick turnaround. 11. Wallace Hartley's Violin The violin that Wallace Hartley, the English violinist and band leader of the band aboard the Titanic, was believed for many years to be lost to the sea. He and the other members are portrayed by the brave band that played until the end in James Cameron's 1997 film. That violin, thought lost for eternity, actually showed up in a woman's attic in 2006 and it was quickly proved to be authentic. By quickly, we mean it took seven years of testing. The violin had been given to the woman, who was an amateur musician, by her music teacher some years earlier, and her son unearthed it in her attic, and he quickly knew it might have some history to it. It's probably the most famous violin of all time, and it was sold at an auction in 2013 for just £900,000, or $1.7 million. 10. Masabumi Hosono Most don't know this guy's story, nor do they recognize the name. Poor Masabumi Hosono was the only Japanese passenger on board the Titanic when it hit the iceberg and managed to save himself from going down with the ship. You'd think that was a good thing, right? Well, according to the Japanese government, public, and the press, what he did was basically an act of cowardice, and he was ostracized and condemned for it. They believed that he should have gone down with the ship rather than save himself. He pulled what Cal in the movie did to survive, heard a cry of room for two more aboard a lifeboat, and hopped on after seeing another man do so. 9. Charles Jogan This guy was the ship's head baker. As the ship began going down, he started throwing wooden chairs overboard for people to use as flotation devices. He then drank a hefty amount of liqueur on the ship and braced for what he knew was coming. He hung onto the ship as it sank into the water and said he rode it down as if it were an elevator. He was in the freezing, icy waters for a few hours before being rescued and managed to live on to tell the tale. 8. The Iceberg did you know that there are several photographs of the actual iceberg that caused the terrible fate of the Titanic? In fact, there's even a photo of the devastation-causing berg that was taken the day after the sinking, and there were a few more photos taken not long after that. Thoughts are that it initially broke off from Greenland in either 1910 or 1911, floated on towards Baffin Bay, and then made its way to the Davis Strait, then the Labrador Sea, and finally out to where it would make contact with the ship in the Atlantic. It's believed that it probably fully melted by the end of 1912 or early 1913 and joined the waters of the world's oceans forever. 7. No binoculars in the crow's nest David Blair, a mariner who was supposed to be aboard the Titanic on its maiden voyage, was reassigned to another ship by the White Star Line just before its sailing. Blair accidentally ended up holding on to a key to a storage locker aboard the ship as he left, which, it seems now, might have been a terrible mistake. 
Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee were the lookouts in the crow's nest when it struck the berg. And in inquiries by Congress, Fleet stated that had they had the binoculars, they probably would have seen it in enough time to get out of the way. Sad to think a simple mistake like that could have potentially saved the lives of thousands. 6. Milvina Dean This woman was the youngest survivor of the disaster and was just two months old when the ship went down. She, her mother, and her brother were some of the first third-class passengers to get off the ship and into a lifeboat. Her father sadly passed with the ship, and Eliza Gladys Milvina Dean passed in 2009 at the age of 97. Her ashes were spread where the Titanic had set sail, the Southampton docks. 5. The ship split in two. Yes, yes, we know. You want to tell us that, duh, everybody knows the ship split in two when it went down. But, did you know that many survivors, when giving their accounts of the night's events, told of how the ship had split in two, but a lot of people didn't believe them or just dismissed their claims? They ended up listening to the highest-ranking surviving officer on the ship, who said the ship slid down in one piece. Those poor people were right, and they were told that their memories of what happened were incorrect. What a shame. 4. The Famous Discovery by Robert Ballard Robert Ballard was a professor of oceanography and United States Navy officer who spent quite a bit of time searching for the Titanic wreckage. He was aboard a French research ship, Le Seroit, in the summer of 1985 searching for it, but then the research ship was recalled. He was then transferred to RV Noor, where he wanted to use the new underwater vehicle, Argo, to look for the ship. He had approached the Navy about financing the search, but they weren't interested. Although they were interested in finding two of their missing submarines, the USS Thresher and the USS Scorpion. They agreed to help him finance his endeavor, but only if he first investigated and searched for their subs, which he did, and he found them by following a debris trail that was caused by the implosions of the subs due to the pressure. He was then given the green light to look for the Titanic, which he ended up finding on September 1st, 1985. 3. Isidore and Ida Strauss Strauss was the co-owner of Macy's department store and perished alongside his wife on the ship when it sank. He and his wife, Ida, had spent the winter in Europe, mainly in southern France, at Cape Martin. Colonel Archibald Gracie IV offered to ask if spots for Isidore and Ida could be made aboard a lifeboat, but Isidore refused to go before other men and while there were still women and children on the ship. Ida was then offered spots on lifeboats, but decided to stay on the ship with her husband. Ida made her maid, Ellen Bird, get on a lifeboat and then gave her her fur coat and said she would not be needing it. They were last seen standing arm in arm on the deck together. Isidore's remains were located, Ida's were not. 2. Charles Herbert Lightoller Now, the name may not ring any bells for you, but this man was not only the second officer on board the Titanic, but he was a significant part of history and other events as well. First of all, he was the most senior member of the crew to survive, but after his survival, which was epic in itself, he moved on to the First World War. He became an officer of the Royal Navy and commanded the HMS Gary, a ship that would sink a German U-boat, UB-110, by ramming it like a boss. There was controversy surrounding survivors of the U-boat, and you get a gist of what happened from Lightoller's statement on it in his memoir when he says he refused to accept that hands-up business. Then, in the Second World War, he didn't allow for his yacht, Sundowner, to be requisitioned for the Battle of Dunkirk and instead sailed himself over into the action and repatriated 127 British soldiers. His action sailing one of the battle's lifeboats earned him a mention in official reports and he inspired the character Mr. Dawson in the movie Dunkirk. We've learned a lot about the Titanic already and we still have one more interesting fact to go. But first, we'd like to ask you, did you know any of these crazy stories prior to watching this video? Are we missing any that you think is vital to the story of the tragic sailing? Let us know in the comments below. 1. A lot of fame was almost on board. While everyone's life is important, there were almost more famous faces on the ship the night of the sinking that would have grabbed even more headlines. J.P. Morgan, the banker, had a suite on board the vessel booked, but at the last second, he decided to remain in France at his resort just a little longer. Guillermo Marconi, the inventor of the radio and telegraph who we mentioned earlier, was offered a free trip on the ship, but he elected to forego the voyage and sailed aboard the Lusitania instead. Theodore Dreiser, an American novelist, had planned to be aboard, but a publisher talked him out of it, saying he should purchase a ticket on a cheaper boat instead. Milton S. Hershey of Hershey's Chocolate Company had a ticket in hand but decided to forego and possibly avoided a terrible fate. And one of the wealthiest men in the world at the time, Alfred Gwynne Vanderbilt, had plans to be on the ship during the voyage, but for some reason didn't make it or decided against it. Sad fact, 
Vanderbilt perished three years later aboard the RMS Lusitania when it sank after being hit by a torpedo from a German U-boat. If this video taught you anything interesting or new, do us a favor and give it a like. Subscribe to our channel below or by clicking on our logo right here on this screen so that you never miss any of our amazing uploads. And be sure to check out this next video we picked out just for you.